In a previous video, I showed how to attach XT90 connectors to a battery. And I've been using these for about 10 years or more. I really like them, they're sturdy, they connect well, they hold large gauge wires, they have the nice cap on the end. Overall, they're great and I have nothing against them, but I finally give it in and I'm switching over to the IC5. Why am I doing this? Well, I find they're about as strong, maybe even stronger as far as connecting. When I run my bashers, they don't come apart as easily as the XT90s do, in my experience. They still handle large gauge wire very well. They also have the added benefit of that third data connector in case you have smart batteries. And they're also compatible with the EC5 and EC3 connectors. And these days, most of the cars I buy come in IC5 or EC5. So this is just gonna make my life a whole heck of a lot easier. And as most of you know, once you clip that IC5 connector from your Arma, it voids the warranty. And not that I care about warranties because I fix my own stuff, but it is a factor. So let's get started. Let's put this on a battery. This is the battery I'll be swapping. It has an XT60 connector on it. They actually sent me this battery and I've used them a couple times now. They're real nice batteries. This is a 100C, 1500 milliamp battery. It came well balanced, charges well. It has a lot of punch to it too, so I like them. But they came with XT60 connectors and I'm gonna swap that out for the IC5. The first thing you wanna do is cut the old connector off and you wanna do this very safely. So you do one wire at a time and I'll show you the method I use. Never cut across the wires. As I said in my previous video, if you do that, you're gonna have a bad day. You're probably gonna have some kind of ignition in the battery and it's not gonna be pretty because you're gonna close the circuit. So you wanna cut one cable at a time and only work with one cable. And the easiest thing to do is just to fold that cable back. Some people will put a rubber band around it. I like to just take some electrical tape and just put it around real quick. That way there's no way these two wires are gonna touch. Now you can safely cut the other wire and work on this wire only to start with. First, you'll strip the cable. This is an old electrician's tool I've had for, man, probably 20 years but I'll post a link to a similar tool in the description. Now, when you twist the wires like you see me doing, it may look like I'm doing this hard. You need to do that very soft. You need to barely touch those. If you do it too rough, you can actually break individual wires and you don't want to do that because you want all of those cables for a good connection, especially if you have an RC car or something that requires a lot of punch. You want as much electricity getting through that cable as possible. To attach the IC5, I leave both sides connected. That way it dissipates the heat so you don't warp the case as much. If you just do one side at a time, there's not as much surface area on this metal and the plastic surrounding it to dissipate the heat. So this stuff will tend to warp more when you're soldering. So keep them together whenever you solder. Next step is to find the negative and positive terminals and match it up with the corresponding wires on the battery. Also, you wanna make sure you put the right side on the battery. This is the one you want on the battery. And after you put the shrink wrap on, you wanna make sure to put that end cap on as well. And remember to do the same for the ground wire. And I'm putting a lot of flux on here because I want this solder to flow through this connector. And I just clean it off with some 99% isopropyl alcohol. And if you can tell, it's hard to see where the cable ends and the connector begins. And that's what you want to see. And then you just bring your shielding up. Next, you'll just want to heat up your shrink tubing so it shrinks down. And for the ground cable, it's just rinse and repeat. Once they've cooled down, you'll just push the end cap up. And when it snaps in place, you're done. Anyway, that's how I attach an IC5 connector to a battery. You can grab one of these in the description as well as all the tools I used. Thanks for watching and see you next time.